We just learned that this all started with a huge volcanic eruption. And then over time, these caves were slowly formed. And in the 1200s, the Mogollon people, who don't call themselves that by the way, but uh, those were the people that lived in these cliff dwellings. Near Silver City, New Mexico, this national monument covers more than two and a half million acres. The Gila National Monument in the 1200s offered shelter for the Mogollon people. In 1907, Teddy Roosevelt designated this forest as a national monument. We just crossed a spring-fed creek, which is probably why this was here. They had a long drought for a couple centuries, and this was a reliable source of water. Also, the cliff dwellings are mm -hmm. southern exposure. So mm -hmm. in the winter, they're out of the wind. And there's a lot of wind in New Mexico. We've learned that firsthand. Yeah. And they get yeah. sunshine. And the sun is higher in the summer, so they get shade and they get the cool from the rocks. So it's like natural air conditioning. So this is like the best location you could be back That's then. That's for sure. So we're going to hike the one mile loop gonna go clockwise and we are allowed into three of the cliff dwellings and we're excited to see what's inside. So come with us. As you can see, there are lots and lots of little bridges to cross over the stream. easy to start getting a feel for what it was like for them up here. In the winter it's pretty cold and you'd really want some shelter. After a hefty little bit of climbing, we finally see our first glimpse of the caves. Once you get inside, it's really interesting to see the different rooms that they had set up there and even some of the places they probably did some cooking. In some of the caves, you can climb a ladder and then look down into the dwellings and see the different rooms and designated places for different families. Here you can tell that they did a lot of cooking. Just look at the ceiling filled with soot. Our absolute favorite part of these caves was the incredible views they had. best real estate in the late Middle Ages in the southwestern United States.
on leaving the caves, you have to go down quite a steep ladder, so I hope you're not afraid of heights. One last look at these incredible caves before we have to start heading back. I kind of wonder if there was some sort of a class system here, like whoever had the most prestige in this place had the best caves, because some of them are huge and some of them are just big enough to sleep in. I'm learning something that I didn't know before. You probably did, but I didn't. And that is there's a northern and a southern exposure on a mountain. And the northern exposure is where you'll see the snow and the ice and it remains cold. The southern exposure is where the sun shines and that is where you want to actually live. Anyway, just a tidbit I just learned. <laughs>